Thank you so much, Dr. Willie. And thank you for the blessing of your son, Nicholas, who does such a great job with us. There's so much I, I want to say to speak on this theme of St. Joseph, guardian of the brightness of Christ. One thing that I want to begin with is to really thank you and encourage you for the theme of this conference, St. John Bosco. We're living in a time when we really, I know for myself, and I've spoken to many people, I'm sure many of us are aware of his vision of the church in a terrible storm and the pillars, the anchors that stabilize the church as a ship in a terrible storm. Where we find ourselves now, the anchors, the pillars are Christ in his Eucharistic presence and the Blessed Virgin Mary. I know that for all of us, those pillars are strong and significant. And that is the light and the leaven, the strength that we need to share with the people that we serve. Let me say very clearly that it humbles me to speak to all of you who are catechists with various degrees after years and years of study. Of course, we've all learned that we really never stop studying the mystery of Jesus Christ, the mystery of our God, the mystery of our Catholic faith. But you as catechists are degreed people. You have studied hard, many of you right here at Franciscan University. I have, because I'm a bishop, they give us these two Ds after our name. DD, Doctor of Divinity. I haven't earned it. It came with ordination, sort of a bonus prize, I guess. <laughs> Maybe in a sense, I'm called to earn that by serving the diocese, by serving the church. But I wanted to be very clear that I don't claim to have the, the catechetical degrees and expertise that you have. But I do have a love for Jesus Christ and his church. And that's what drives me. And I know that's what drives you. But I wanted to begin with that sort of disclaimer because I don't really claim to approach all of this in a very academic way. But as a man of faith, a man who is called to be a successor of the apostles, imagine for yourself as catechist having that label. Talk about daunting. And so please do pray for the bishops to be true shepherds. It is more challenging than ever. But when we are challenged by serving Christ, we look at him on the cross. So I just want to clearly acknowledge that I don't claim to have your degrees, but I do have a love for the Lord and a desire to serve and a willingness to continue to grow. And maybe that's the greatest gift that I have and that I can bring all of you is a continuing hunger to know the truth more deeply. Dr. Willie gave us some great reflections and that image of heaven from St. Anselm reminds us it is always beyond. It is always further away than we can grasp. So as I talk about this theme of St. Joseph, guardian of the brightness of Christ, what I also want to share with you is where does that come from? Guardian of the brightness of Christ. There's a hymn that I love. I won't inflict it on you by singing it. But probably many of you are aware of this hymn. And I'd like for you to 
to kind of let it echo through your heart and mind as we reflect on St. Joseph. The hymn is Brightness of the Father's Glory, speaking of Christ. Brightness of the Father's Glory. I love the beautiful praise and worship music that was offered earlier. And if we pay attention, so much of that is about light. It's about brightness. It mentioned diamonds and the sparkle and the joy of our life in Christ. That hymn inspires me to look to Christ. Brightness of the Father's glory. A brightness that is beyond our imagining. And I think we always have to really embrace that. As Dr. Willie was speaking, it reminded me, even as I knew what I was going to speak on, the idea that it is always brighter than we can imagine. That is what you long to share. That's the fire in your belly as catechists. I know, I know many wonderful catechists, and we have a desire to teach and to share that brightness that we never quite, I can speak for myself, and probably for all of us, we never quite get there. I can tell you, I've been a priest for 36 years, and I love preaching. I love giving the homily. I love to have the chance to share my own reflection on the Word of God. But I can tell you, I've never felt like I got there. I never felt like I really said what was in my heart. Because it really is always beyond us. And maybe that's the beauty to remember, as Dr. Willie said so beautifully, heaven is beyond. It's beyond what we can fathom and what we can embrace. And as I reflect on St. Joseph, I think that's what... I hope to remind myself of and remind all of us of. Here is a man, a real man, a man of fidelity to the Hebrew Scriptures, fidelity to the people of Israel, a true Israelite, an inheritor of the royalty of the family of David. But apparently, we don't know that much about St. Joseph. Some of the great saints and mystics have have filled in some of the blanks, at least in their mystical reflections and revelations. But the Word of God tells us very little. But it tells us enough to know that I believe St. Joseph, as the guardian of the Son of God, does guard the brightness of the Father's glory. And what I would encourage, it, it, we're all aware of the really difficult journey we've had in the past couple of years. It's been alluded to many times, even as we gather this evening. We need to remember that brightness is with us now. And in this year of St. Joseph, I'd encourage all of us to reflect on the reality that St. Joseph continues to guard the brightness of the Father's glory in Jesus Christ. To guard that brightness that for all of us, there have probably been moments when it is dimmed, at least for a moment, a moment of fear, a moment of concern, a moment of deep confusion, or a moment of anger, Whatever the darkness that encroaches, let's remember that what we're speaking of is not something in the dim mist of history. It's right now. St. Joseph, in the mystery of our faith, along with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, in a sense, they are all guarding the brightness that glows so brightly in heaven. That's why we rejoice in the opportunity that I had to celebrate the Eucharist right here this evening. When we approach the altar of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of love that he has given us to know that he is here, really present now in our world and in our lives, that is St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary and all of the saints 
guarding the brightness of the Father's glory. And in a very real sense, as catechist, you are the ones guarding that brightness as well. I think we can truly say that. As I spoke to some of the, uh, the leadership this evening when we had dinner, <clears throat> you are on the front lines if you are involved in catechetical work. There are many people pushing against the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we know it is a truth for humanity. The Son of God has come to all creation for all time, for all peoples. So let that fire of love of Christ in your belly continue to burn brightly. And I hope that as we reflect on St. Joseph, he can really inspire each of us to really know from the past and for now, the brightness of Christ is as bright as ever. The light of Christ shines with us in the Word of God, in the sacraments, in the teachings of our Catholic faith. One thing that I've tried to emphasize over the past couple of years, this is good news. I'll mention something from my younger years. I'm 62 years old, so for many of you, I'm the old guy in the room. For others, we're sort of in the same place. But if you're about my age, when I was in high school, <clears throat> I remember it was just the New Testament, and it had newsprint on the cover. It was a paperback handed out to us as, as high school kids, and it said, good news for modern man. It still is good news for modern man. And I think we'd all agree, within all the confusion of the past couple of years and before, we need that good news. And St. Joseph, what I'd hope to help us all reflect on, is that his, he lived his daily life with the brightness of the Father's glory, with light from light, true God from true God. We can't fathom what that must have been like. But what I would like to do, as we all know, you're better scholars than I am, but they're really just a few verses where Joseph is mentioned. Toward the end of the first chapter of the gospel according to Matthew, for the first time we hear about Joseph after that genealogy Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. I love the beautiful simplicity of how St. Joseph, the adoptive father of the Son of God, the husband of Mary, is just quietly mentioned. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Not even directly referring to Joseph. If we look at that closely, it mentions Jacob his father, and it mentions Mary, his spouse. It's almost as if Joseph is just an aside. He's the one that connected the two. He's the, the son of Jacob and the husband of Mary. I think that tells us a lot about St. Joseph. And what I would like to frame my reflection in this evening is five basic moments for St. Joseph that come from the scriptures, that come from the joyful mysteries that come right out of the scriptures, but really also bracketed with the unknown or the hidden years, as I would like to call it. I'd like to begin reflecting with you on St. Joseph. As he comes into the world, unknown, unrecorded, I'm not aware of any record of Joseph being born or of his early years. In Matthew's gospel, we first hear of him as the husband of Mary. He always is sort of in the background. But I'd like to reflect with you. We've just finished in the daily readings. We heard it in today's Mass 
from we've heard about Genesis and that journey from creation through Abram becoming Abraham and then the story of Joseph, the Old Testament Joseph, the son of Jacob, and then we have, of course, the Joseph who is the adoptive father of Jesus, the husband of Mary. I'd like to begin by reflecting on that period of Joseph's life. We know nothing about it, but I'd like to use our imaginations and see how he's, I believe, already guarding the brightness of Christ, even before Christ is incarnate, because he's a man of a faithful Jew living the commandments of the first covenant. We could say he's one of the last in that long line of faithful members of the people of Israel, of our ancestors living faithfully in the light that had been shared with the world, revealing the one true God. So we have St. Joseph in that period of his early life. We don't know how old St. Joseph was when he became the husband of Mary. We probably all read the, the speculations of that and some of the mystics who have different ideas. But I think there's a message for all of us in the hiddenness of Joseph's life. For me, it opens up the reflection that all of us can relate to him because all of us, in many ways, live those hidden lives as well. We live in a time when making the headlines and making an impact in the world is so valued. But I think St. Joseph teaches us beautifully what we all know instinctively and what we live but what we need to, I believe, focus on, and I think St. Joseph can help us to do so, to recognize that the lives we live that are hidden, those tiny sacrifices you make for your spouse and your children or for your friends or your community or for, the, for those that you serve in whatever way, the hidden ways that we serve. I think St. Joseph can really be a patron for all of us, of that hidden goodness in our lives that we need to allow to grow and to shine more brightly. In many ways, that is St. Joseph's work, guarding the brightness of Christ, the light from light, in ways that are hidden to the world and remain hidden to the world. But we can imagine and understand those years before he becomes the husband of Mary and the adoptive father of the Son of God. So I'd like to take that period of Joseph's life just to reflect a little bit together and reflect on all of the sweep of the Hebrew story that, that is our story as well, the people of Israel, the Old Testament, or the Hebrew Scriptures. St. Joseph is the inheritor of all of that. And so in a very real sense, he holds the covenant as he becomes a man of the new covenant. Really, in many ways, the first man to be a disciple. After, of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary is the first woman to be a disciple, to welcome in the new world, the new life of the, what we call the New Testament, the time of the gospel, the time when the brightness of Christ is not only a hope for Messiah, but he is truly with us, dwelling with us as he really is in the world today through word and sacrament. That is our Catholic faith. So to reflect on St. Joseph in those years that we know nothing about, but to reflect on what we do know, that he was a man of righteousness, a man of faith. And we can see that in what is testified in the Gospels. And then, of course, the conception of Jesus in the womb of Mary and Joseph's reaction, the message of the angel, all of that that we know so well, leading up to the birth of Jesus. Joseph is absolutely there. And there's so much woven into that story that many of the mystics speak of in various ways. Certainly, that is just mystical reflection. It is not part of of the deposit of faith that we can place certainty in. 
But I think it's a beautiful aspect of enriching our relationship with the patron of the universal church, St. Joseph. So first to reflect on the hidden years that it begins with, and then on what we do hear about in the scriptures where he welcomes the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, with all the questions that we can imagine, and, and the, the Gospels touch on the doubts and the questions. But he listens to the message of the angel, he listens to the dreams that he has, and he guards the brightness that is Jesus Christ, newly come into the world. And then we have, of course, Joseph there in the, the next mystery of the rosary. As Jesus gets a little older, I think there's a lot to mine from that time when Jesus is 12 and Mary and Joseph go to find him in the temple. And then one of my favorite parts of the life of Joseph, again hidden, is those years between 12 and 30 when Christ begins his public ministry. Again, we hear nothing about St. Joseph, but we can know that at least for a time he was there guarding the brightness of the Father's glory, there present in the world, Jesus Christ working. Probably many of us even have even read in some of the, the Scripture scholarship, they're not sure whether Carpenter was translated properly or not, but I don't think that needs to be our focus. Clearly, the Word of God illustrates St. Joseph as an ordinary worker, but we know that he has a heritage of royalty and I think that tells us a lot as well, that St. Joseph is there as a patron of the truth, even though he lives in humble circumstances. So the first period we look at is the time before Christ comes into the world. And then, as he is conceived in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and then in the birth of Christ, the Son of God. And then in the, when he's 12 years old, that finding in the temple. And then to go to the hidden years that we know nothing about again, but I think it's worth reflecting together and seeing how does St. Joseph guard that brightness even in those hidden years? Because at least in my prayer and in my experience, all of that speaks to our time as well, because very often we can feel that we are lost in the darkness, and St. Joseph continues to guard the brightness of the Father's glory. Let us turn specifically to the Scriptures as we reflect on what we know about St. Joseph. Very familiar stories that we've all read many times, but I'd like to allow us to hear where Joseph is mentioned as we reflect on how he guards the brightness of Christ. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus came about. When his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, an upright man, unwilling to expose her to the law, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream and said to him, Joseph, son of David, have no fear about taking Mary as your wife. It is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived this child. She is to have a son, and you are to name him Jesus." because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had directed him 
and received her into his home as his wife. He had no relations with her at any time before a, she bore a son, whom he named Jesus. Of course, as I said from Matthew's first chapter, we're all very familiar with that story of Joseph. But I think it's important to hearken back to what that alludes to, the prophets promising a Messiah, promising that the light of the world would come. And so here is St. Joseph poised to be there to guard the brightness, really even before the Son of God is conceived in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and certainly after that. Let's look for a moment at how does St. Joseph guard the brightness even before the Lord is incarnate among us, before he takes on this wondrous mission to guard the Son of God as he is in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary and then born into this world. St. Joseph, I believe, guards that brightness by living faithfully as a man of Israel, as an inheritor of the royalty of David, as a man who learned, obviously, from what we hear later on. He knew what the covenant was about. He knew the commandments of God. He knew how to live as a righteous man. I believe that tells all of us a lot about what we are called to do, what you are called to do as catechist, that all of the teaching is about reminding us that the Lord has sent his Savior among us. We know it as a reality. The people of Israel saw it as a great hope. We know all the prophets who speak of that. And St. Joseph is there as a man inheriting all of that history. St. Joseph would have known the stories that we hear in Genesis and Exodus. St. Joseph would have been a well-catechized Jew, if we can use that word. He knew his faith well. And I think that reminds all of us, and you as catechist, of how you, like St. Joseph, are called to guard the brightness of Christ in the world today, by simply teaching a child, by helping a teenager learn more about Christ and be drawn to him rather drawn it than drawn into the world. I think St. Joseph can inspire, I know he inspires me and I, I believe he can inspire all of us to really embrace that hidden, that sometimes intangible reality that Coming to know more deeply the truth of God is guarding the brightness of Christ. The Catechism teaches us that all of Scripture is about Jesus Christ. St. Joseph is one who knew that, who knew that Christ was fulfilling the prophecy of the hope for Messiah. And I think we need to embrace that and to rejoice in knowing that St. Joseph in his early years, as he was a young boy, as he grew as a man in a family of Hebrew origin, as he grew to know the scriptures. One thing that I love to share that I've shared with my priest is just my own personal reflection. As we celebrate this year of St. Joseph, I think you can tell Maybe it's my namesake. Maybe it's just the love of St. Joseph. But I have done a lot of reflecting and prayer on St. Joseph and his significance. I want to give a shout out to Father Donald Calloway's wonderful book, Consecration to St. Joseph. I would imagine many of you have read that and walked through that journey of consecration. If you haven't had the chance yet, I encourage you to do so. It's one of those things that it's never too late you can consecrate yourself to St. Joseph as many of us have consecrated ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I think both are critical in this time. I feel Jesus Christ calling me as one man and a bishop and calling all of us 
to know his mother more deeply, to know his adoptive father more deeply, because we need those models that they offer us. And St. Joseph beautifully, I guess I would frame that first part of the reflection on St. Joseph as he was a man steeped in the tradition of his faith as he was prepared to guard the brightness of the Son of God as he came into the world. We can imagine, and the scriptures really don't tell us, but we can imagine that St. Joseph was probably surprised is exactly how this was unfolding. He would have known absolutely of the promised Messiah, but how the, the God's loving plan would unfold probably was a huge surprise to St. Joseph, as it can be a huge surprise to us as we, we reflect on God's wondrous plan. So St. Joseph, I believe, even before Christ is conceived in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, can be a great model and reminder of guarding the brightness, of rejoicing in the light coming into the world, and knowing that all that we have learned all that Joseph knew is building toward that light that is brighter than we can imagine. Let me just for a moment focus on that idea of brightness that has so captivated me. We all pray that Christ is light from light, true God from true God. I love science, and I've always been intrigued by light in the study of light, in the in intricacy of that. We know that scientists have learned a lot about light, but it's still, in many ways, it's a mystery. How can light do what it does? And I believe that's embedded in the great mystery of all creation. And so as we reflect on St. Joseph as guardian of the brightness, I'd encourage you to reflect yourselves on what that brightness means. He is light from light. What does that mean? The, the image that I can share with you that isn't adequate, but it's the best I can do that I share, I'd encourage you to come up with your own image. But probably many of us love watching a sunrise or a sunset. And what I like to think of is that brightness is that first ray of light that shines forth as the sun comes up, or that last ray of light that shines as the sun is setting. To me, that captures something of the brightness that is Christ. God is light, and His Son, Jesus Christ, is the brightness of that light. We need that brightness in a time of darkness, and St. Joseph is the guardian of that brightness, I find, a beautiful inspiration. I really believe that this time of the year of St. Joseph and everything that we're reading about and praying about St. Joseph, I believe that this is part of God's plan. When did it happen? In the midst of this COVID confusion and all that we're dealing with in the church that we're concerned about and the world that we're concerned about and to focus on St. Joseph I believe is divinely inspired. I encourage all of us to continue to reflect on his role in the life of the church that is not just an ancient past role, it is right now as he continues, I believe, in my life and in yours, to guard the brightness of the Father's glory, to guard the brightness of Christ in a time when too many want to diminish that light, the joy and the hope that the gospel brings. It is beyond our imagining. And I think St. Joseph can remind us of that. As we move on with the conception of Jesus, what strikes me about St. Joseph guarding the brightness there is the reality of his humanity. St. Joseph is very human in his approach to this. It is not automatic. He's, he's concerned. He wants to support Mary. But the scriptures tell us that he wasn't sure about how he could do that. It's through the message of an angel, the message of a dream, that it's clarified for him. 
And I think that St. Joseph shows us that we must trust in faith as well. He was a righteous man as the scriptures describe him. And especially at that moment when he hears that his betrothed, Mary of Nazareth, has conceived a child in her womb, he's at first questioning and unsure, but he come, becomes very sure. And that is where he steps up because of his heritage. He steps up to guard the brightness of Jesus Christ, even as he is coming into the world. We all know the beautiful artwork de that depicts Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Jesus in the womb, Mary usually on a, a donkey, and Joseph guiding them as they journey toward Bethlehem. Joseph is guarding the brightness there. And I, as men and women, I'd encourage us to bring into our own imagination, to reflect on what that was like. Many of you have, have had children and taken care of the birth of your children. And you know the, the challenges there and the human reality that Joseph and Mary were dealing with. Certainly, in the miraculous reality that the Son of God conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, yes, it was miraculous, but there were real human elements. And the gospel tells us that, where Mary and Joseph are looking for a place to stay. One of the uh, beautiful stories that I remember from Father Calloway's book is talking about, which we don't, it's not recorded in Scripture, and we always have to be clear about that, but it makes sense that St. Joseph very likely had to run into town to get whatever provisions for this long journey they could put together. I think we need to humanize what St. Joseph did because the message there that I hear is that he helps us as we can feel ourselves mere humans, which we are. But St. Joseph can remind us that we can be instruments of God's plan and grace as well. And as catechists, I'd encourage you to open your hearts and minds to where that happens, where you, like St. Joseph, are guarding the brightness of Christ, maybe in the life of a child who's just beginning to learn, or the life of a teenager who is doubtful, or the life of, a, of an older 20-something, or, or really throughout life. We can have our doubts. I've had many people contact me with questions and concerns and saying, even at times saying, Bishop, I'm about ready to leave the church. I've had it. I believe we need to cling to that role of St. Joseph and like him to guard the brightness. We can't control another person's choices, but we can encourage them, as St. Joseph does, to, to guard that brightness and to protect the light that Christ brings into the world in our Catholic faith, in the we who inherit the, the covenant that Christ has established, that St. Joseph is there to celebrate and support as the first disciple or the second disciple, I guess we can say. And then we move on to the actual birth and the, the childhood of Jesus. I love, and some of the artwork really reflects on this, I love to think about and to pray about St. Joseph teaching Christ. I've shared with my priest that idea of St. Joseph holding the Scriptures as he holds the Son of God and showing the Scriptures in the form most likely of a scroll as Jesus himself holds it after he begins his public ministry. I love to think of St. Joseph as the first guardian of the body of Christ, which he truly is. That inspires me in praying about the glorious gift of the Eucharist that we are called to guard as well and to be strong in faith that the real presence of Christ is with us. Dr. Willie helped me to find somewhere in the catacombs here a Eucharistic chapel where we had a chance to pray for a few moments. That 
presence of Christ down in this building is really the same Christ that St. Joseph guarded and continues to guard in the world today. In those years after Jesus there is, is present in the temple, as he tells Mary and Joseph, it's beautiful where Mary says, your father and I have been looking for you. That's recorded right there in the scriptures. And it beautifully reminds us that Joseph, though he's not the biological father, is truly the father of Jesus Christ, who nurtures him, who plays that role, that significant role of a father for the Son of God. I think we need to really revel in that and rejoice in the model that St. Joseph offers us. And I like to reflect on those hidden years after Jesus is 12. The gospel tells us he goes back home and grows obediently in, in goodness and grace there in the home in Nazareth. The scriptures tell us very little, but again, St. Joseph is there. We don't know how long. We don't know the age of St. Joseph, but he models for us guarding the brightness of Christ as Christ grows from an infant to a, a toddler to a little boy to a young boy and then a young man. We don't know how long St. Joseph was there, but for whatever length of time he was still with Jesus, we can trust that he was guarding the brightness, sharing with him this beautiful heritage that St. Joseph himself had inherited, the, the story of the people of Israel that is our story. So St. Joseph, I believe, really can be a great inspiration to all of you as catechists because he really lived a life in this world. However long he was with Jesus, he guarded that brightness of the Messiah that he knew would come. And he lived with him in the home in Nazareth along with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary and Joseph are constantly reminders to us as the Holy Family along with Jesus of what families are called to be in the world today. One of the first things we did in the St. Philip, Philip Institute that we established in Tyler was to begin working in the formation of marriage. And I think St. Joseph, once again, is a great patron there to assist us and to help us to form husbands and wives in the light of Christ, in that brightness of the glory of Jesus Christ that we need so desperately in the world today. I'd encourage you to <clears throat> rejoice in what St. Joseph lived as his mission in life. Because in many ways, I think it's our mission in the world today. We would all agree that there's been too much darkness and too many people are still dealing with that darkness. The light of Christ is as bright as ever, but I believe as catechists, and I would hope we can all embrace that call to guard the brightness of Christ along with St. Joseph. I want to um, conclude my thoughts with once again turning to Scripture just a few verses later in the Gospel of Matthew, just in chapter 2. St. Joseph, by my reckoning, is mentioned for the last time in this passage. After Herod's death, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt with the command, get up, take the child and his mother, and set out for the land of Israel. Those who had designs in his life of the child are dead. He got up and took the child and his mother and returned to the land of Israel. He heard, however, that Archelaus had succeeded his father, Herod, as king of Judea, and he was afraid to go back from there. Instead, because of a warning received in a dream, Joseph went to the region of Galilee. There he settled in a town called 
Nazareth in the way, in this way, what was said through the prophets was fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. We're all familiar with that passage, and I think it beautifully illustrates St. Joseph once again, guarding the brightness of Christ, bringing him to the fulfillment of prophecy and to the home where he would grow up. St. Joseph, I pray, can be a great inspiration to all of us of living in the light of Christ and trusting that that light shines brightly. Your work as catechist is invaluable as you share the light of Christ with others. Trust in Joseph as your patron. He is patron of the world, uh, of the universal Catholic Church. And as someone pointed out to me recently, we have the challenge of recognizing that if St. Joseph is patron of the universal church and Jesus Christ has come for all humanity, we are to proclaim St. Joseph is the patron of all humanity, calling all to the light of Christ. He has guarded the brightness of Christ well. May we follow him and embrace that call joyfully of guarding the brightness of the Lord in a too often dark world. Let us turn to St. Joseph for strength and inspiration. He will always point us to Christ. He will always accompany us in our devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, who also points us to Christ. Let us rejoice in the image of St. Joseph, guardian of the brightness of Christ. God bless you.